Saturn, the second largest planet in the solar system. It is a gas giant, meaning there is nothing solid on its surface to stand on. It is also quite gigantic since you can fit 764 Earths inside Saturn. Part of the reason Saturn is very recognizable is because of its wide rings. It is the largest and the brightest ring system in the solar system. Now, they may look wide and smooth, but up close, it's a different story. It ranges in thickness from 10 meters to 1 kilometer, which is actually nothing considering that they are 280,000 kilometers across. These rings are made out of particles that are very close to each other. That is, particles that range in size from a normal sized rock to a mountain sized object and these particles are mostly made out of water ice with a trace of metals which is as well the reason why these rings are so bright water ice reflects light pretty well there are as well lots of gaps in the ring and the rings are divided their names are A, B and C there are more but those are the main ones In 1610, Galileo became the first person to see Saturn's rings, and he was captivated instantly. But he didn't think they were rings. Instead, he thought they were three separate bodies that didn't move around each other. In 1655, Christian Huygens became the first to realise that Saturn actually had rings. But fast forward to today, and we've discovered far more than Galileo and Huygens ever would have dreamt possible about Saturn and its rings. And we've even been there a few times. The most recent and potentially most interesting spacecraft to visit the gas giant was the Cassini-Huygens spacecraft. The Huygens part of the spacecraft actually dropped down into Titan, which is Saturn's largest moon, but the Cassini part of the spacecraft carried on to the gas giant to perform multiple flybys of the planet and its moons. It revolutionised our understanding of Saturn and its ring system, and it even treated us to some of the most breathtaking images of them that we've seen today, like these. So the rings are constantly changing, but there are seven clearly defined ring groups. These main rings extend out to around 282,000 kilometres, but what might surprise you is that the main ring's thickness is sometimes only around 30 feet but it can reach up to around 300 feet. It's often thought that Saturn's ring system is unique, but in fact ring systems are quite common. All four of our solar system's gas giants have a ring system. Jupiter and Neptune have extremely faint rings, whilst Uranus has a slightly brighter ring, but when compared to Saturn it's still very dim. Some minor planets orbiting the outer solar system have even been found to have rings. So it's safe to assume that planets even outside of our solar system could have rings as well. Of course, what really makes Saturn stand out from the other planets is its spectacular rings. So Saturn's rings are very, very thin in comparison to how wide they are. They're very thin, so if you look at them edge on, you can, you can barely see them. And they're made from a, a mix of things, mostly from ice, uh, water ice, which means that they're very reflective, and that's why we can see them from Earth. Cassini has also revealed a whole army of moons orbiting around the planet. We thought that there were about 20 moons, but Cassini's shown us there are at least 60 moons and counting, and these moons are incredible in, the, in themselves. They range completely from some that are shaped like potatoes, some that are huge sponges made from, we think, a coral kind of substance. There's one moon, uh, Mimas, that looks like the Death Star, if you've ever watched Star Wars. But one of the moons in particular caught Cassini's eye, Enceladus. At first glance, it looked like a cold and lifeless icy body. But then Cassini caught the moon in silhouette and it revealed something spectacular. Geysers erupting through Enceladus's icy crust, shooting water vapour out into space. This water vapour has to come from somewhere, so if it is coming from underneath the icy crust, is there a liquid ocean of water underneath? Well, we don't know. 
Most of Saturn's moons, including Enceladus, are tiny. But one is a giant, Titan, nearly half the size of the Earth. The moon is covered with a thick atmosphere that shrouded its surface. But Cassini carried a probe built by ESA called Huygens that descended down through the atmosphere and onto the surface of Titan, revealing an intriguing looking landscape. There's river valleys and dunes and it's very much like an, a, a young Earth. If you could go to Earth five billion years ago, this is kind of what Titan looks like now. There's liquid oceans on the surface of Titan, but they're not liquid water, they're liquid methane. And methane's a gas on Earth, but because it's so cold at Titan, so far away from the sun, the gaseous methane on Earth is actually a liquid on, on Titan. With spacecraft like Cassini, the distant wonders of our solar system have been brought closer to home. Our planetary neighbourhood now feels that little bit smaller. But we should not forget that sending a spacecraft to another planet is no easy feat. Because of the Saturn's inhospitable environment, the planet cannot support life. But some of its moons might. The Saturn has the largest number of moons in the solar system. Enceladus, one of the Saturn's smallest moons, is covered in ice. Enceladus exhibits geyser activity, making it the smallest known geologically active object in the solar system. Titan, Saturn's largest moon, is the only moon in the solar system with clouds and a dense atmosphere. The clouds rain down liquid hydrocarbons like methane and ethane, making Titan the only body in the solar system other than Earth to clearly have bodies of liquid on its surface. Both Titan and Enceladus have underground oceans that would make them potentially capable of sustaining life. Saturn's moons also play a role in shaping the planet's rings. Saturn also has a dead star orbiting it called Mimas. Saturn does have a magnetosphere which is strong enough to deflect solar wind from the Sun. Saturn's magnetosphere, like Earth, provides magnificent aurora. On Earth, the light of aurora is mostly from oxygen atoms and nitrogen molecules. On Saturn, it is from hydrogen. The average orbital distance of Saturn from the Sun is 870 million miles and on year on Saturn takes almost 30 Earth years. One day at the equator or the poles lasts about 10 hours and 40 minutes and everywhere else the day lasts 10 hours and 38 minutes. This is because Saturn isn't it solid and is not rotating at the same speed all over. Saturn is the farthest planet that can be seen by humans without help from a telescope. Despite all that we have learned from Cassini, Saturn still remains a world of mystery.